me introduce photo director uh, three to you. So um, from Cyberlink side, last year we started with photo director 2011. We just launched the successor uh, called photo director three. Let me highlight one of the new things in photo director three. Basically, photo director is a software for editing, managing your photos. Um, it's a non-destructive. Um, photo software, so which means uh, we don't touch the original picture unless you um, save it as a new picture. So um, um, we can, um, of course, import your photos. We have a library module, we have an adjustment module, an edit module, slideshow module, and of course also a print module. So <clears throat> for um, the um, project management, the library management, um, you are able to set smart collection filters on all the photos you have imported. So which means um, you can create a smart collection filter and for example um, <coughs> access EXIF tech data from the camera, uh, like the camera type for example, um, and well you could for example here type in Nikon and then once we save this, um, you can by one click access all the photos which come from a Nikon camera within your photo library. So it's very easy, for example, to search for your best pictures, um, <clears throat> your unmodified pictures, um, pictures from a certain camera or for a certain lens or focal. Of course, you can also access folders directly on your PC and you can create albums here. Um, so let me demonstrate some of the new features of Photo Director 3. So one new thing is, beside the EXIF tech data, we implemented the IPTC data, which means once you click on metadata here, you see all the, beside the EXIF tech data, the IPTC data coming up. And let me highlight all this data are editable. So once you click inside there, you can edit them. So this is very important once you share your photos with others on the web so they can contact you maybe um, if they like your photo to buy the license or whatever. So <clears throat> let me show you some new tools we have in the adjustment. So basically the adjustment you find on the top, um, the single tools um, of course um, to crop and rotate the picture. We have a spot removal, we have a red eye correction, we have um, an adjustment brush and manual, and we just added um, an adjustment selection, which means this allows you very quickly to mark parts in the picture here, in the photo. With the mouse wheel, you can modify the size of your tool. And once we did this, of course, uh, we can go here and add some more blue into the sky. <clears throat> Maybe even increase the saturation a little bit. And when you see a before and after, you very quickly see the difference between the two pictures. The red dot here is the mask, so you can use several masks in your picture. And let me highlight, you can also invert the mask. So Whatever you selected first, once you invert it, you select the rest and, for example, you can continue with modifying the green grass. Okay. So, one powerful thing we have also is the gradient mask. So, here in the adjustment, on the top here, you find the gradient mask. Once we call up the gradient mask, you can place it inside your picture easily. So for anything of the effects we are applying now, you will see that um, it applies more to the dark red area and then slightly more to the lighter red area. So which means uh, once we place the mask here, for example, we can uh, work on the brightness here, adjust the brightness and uh, maybe on the exposure a little bit, just to show you the effect. 
So which means if you compare before and after, you will see the dark part of the picture in the front was corrected. And let me highlight, I mean, um, you can add more masks easily. So you can create another mask, for example, place it here. And for example, correct some sunlight which is coming from the left top um, to continue optimize your picture. Okay. Oh, back to the gradient mask. Let me highlight that we have lots of adjustment uh, for the gradient mask, actually more than the competition, so we can modify the white balance using the gradient mask. We have um, the full control over the tones. Um, <clears throat> we have also the possibility to work on HSL and um, use as well the sharpness and the noise reduction for the gradient mask. Okay, so for Photorector 3 we also added a curve correction and um, let me show it to you. Probably you've noticed this once you've been in a big city um, and uh, yeah, choose a um, position where you made a photo up top to the skyscrapers. Then you see this uh, kind of distortion. So um, we implemented a curve correction. Let me go to the adjustment module. So at the very bottom of our tools here, find the keys for correction. So you can very easily turn your picture. So now you see the skyscraper aligned to the grid. And once you use it, the picture is aligned and the skyscraper is uh, straight again. A new thing you also find in the Photorector 3 is that you can work directly in a curve. So which means you have the dark tones, the mid tones and the very bright tones here. So which means I can, for example, bring a little bit more vivid to the buildings here by modifying the dark tones. Um, let me increase the the sunset a little bit more and bring back some light at the very top. So I think this gives you some idea before and after how you can optimize your picture. So of course we did a keystone correction and we brought back um, the sunset very nicely. Okay. So next thing is of course uh, we implemented the fish eye correction. So Again, in the adjustments, let's switch back to a single view. You find the keystone distortion here, uh, so you can modify the picture here. And once you drop it here, you get rid of about the dark corners in the picture. Okay. Well, maybe you've seen uh, we have a complete new model, the edit module. Um, so um, let me show you uh, one of the features of the edit module, which is an object remover. So once I go to the edit module, I have a bunch of tools here, pupil beautifier, photo effects, a removal tool, I have the possibility to compose photos and also work on watermarks. But let me first show you how the object removal works. For that, let me zoom into the picture a little bit. So we have this metal construction. Let me go to the object removal. And I can choose the pen here. And now I can just mark some object here very roughly. And I can take it, drag drag it to the right position here to find an exact pattern. We really carefully mix it with the background. So you still can modify the size, which also has an impact on the structure of whatever you choose. And then we can apply it and you can see we easily remove the object. Okay. One more function of the edit module is a background removal. So for the background removal, again in the edit module, 
So you have the possibility to use um, a magic selection or a lasso. So let's use the magic selection. So you can very easily mark here the person. It's really just a, a rough selection of the person. Um, let's just apply it and take it as it is. So now we cut him, we'll remove the background, but it's better to choose uh, some light color in the background to see our results. And of course you can see that uh, this was really just a rough cut. Um, but we have the possibility to use um, here um, uh, an edge brush, so which means once we click the edge brush and we just follow here the edges and the corner of the hair, we just click once and by like that our software automatically identifies what's in the foreground, what's in the background. Let me zoom in a little bit. So you can see here that we really have some good results for the hair, so you would need to spend hours to cut it in this detail. So you see the edit module actually uh, combines a set of tools uh, which is really easy for the end user to um, access and uh, instantly use them. So, let me show you an example for um, one of the beautifiers. It's a wrinkle remover. So, of course, you have the possibility to use a toothbrush to whiten your teeth, uh, eye blinker uh, to give your eyes a special shine, skin smoother to smoothen the skin. But let me show you the wrinkle remover. Let me zoom in a little bit to the picture. So, here I can use the tool and just mark very quickly some area here. And let's say I'm done. I can take it, shift it a little bit here. Again, work on the structure and the size so I can fine tune. Once I'm happy, I can apply. You see, we removed very quickly the wrinkles. So it's easy to use, but also very efficient on the other side. Um, of course, it's all up to each individual how much you want to use this kind of beautifiers. Uh, let me just show you some extremes. So, I mean, if you really use um, everything possible, then you have a before and after, which looks quite different actually. Okay. Um, let me show you that the edit module also contains a watermark creator. So with the watermark creator I can create new watermarks. So which means I can add some text. Of course I can specify the font size, the color, the opacity. I can add frames, I can add single pictures showing up in my watermark and I can also display some of the EXIF tech information from the camera um, in of course different um, <coughs> styles. So once I'm happy with the template I can save the template and the nice thing in our program is I have a watermark template browser I would say. So which means I select the photo here and then I can browse very easily through my templates and can see if this watermark applies best to my selected picture. Because sometimes you are creating a watermark and um, this watermark um, has some uh, white text on it and 
Unfortunately for the selected picture, the white text displays on some white background and it's not visible at all, or just partly visible. So with the watermark browser, you can very quickly browse through your watermarks. It can be um, some <coughs> passive watermarks, it can be some um, very uh, strong watermarks, depending on where you want to publish the picture. Let me highlight that um, depending on the picture, of course, um, you can also show here uh, the EXIF tag information if you selected them. So, which means um, here you can then see um, what camera model, what um, lens was used, um, what photo was used to shot this picture. I think this is quite interesting, especially for people um, participating in contests and they want to show other users how they shot the picture with what equipment and um, of course what settings. For Photoraptor 3 we also added a print module. So the print module you can find here on the shop on the top. So let me show you the print module. So once I click on the print module I can very easily compile um, my prints. I can just drag and drop some picture here. And of course I can also recompile it here. I can specify how many photos should show up in the grid, how many rows I want to have. I can auto-rotate, auto-zoom in. Um, I have the possibility to choose um, ICC profile of the printer to correct it. Uh, I can add a watermark to this uh, printout. Um, and of course we are supporting a complete set of different uh, output formats. And then of course I can print locally on my system. Let me also uh, highlight that uh, for PhotoRector we have support to export, so which means uh, the export module is uh, very very detailed, which means you can uh, work on the export destination, you can fine tune the naming here, um, which means um, you can also specify in which file format you want to output or in um, which color space you want to output. Um, you can also resize the picture automatically if you want to do that. And of course you can remove or add um, Excel tag data or IPC data and specify watermark. Um, but you not only can export locally, but you can also share it, which means you can upload to YouTube, uh, to Flickr and Facebook. So <clears throat> let me highlight that you just need to uh, type in your username and password and uh, we automatically upload these pictures then um, to Flickr or Facebook. You don't need to worry about what is the right format, what is the right size. This is all handled by our program. And maybe you've seen we also support a slideshow module. So for the slideshow module uh, it's also very easy. You just drag and drop some photos here on the slideshow area. Um, of course, you can add some text to the photos, uh, you can add some color words uh, to have a nice intro. And um, the nice thing is, once uh, I'm happy, I can add also some background music, I can specify the format and output. And um, let me also highlight that uh, we can produce an output uh, in different file formats here, up to full HD resolution. So by that uh, you can have a local file which you can then burn on a disk or uh, you can, if you're happy with your slideshow, you can also share directly and upload to YouTube. So once you're connected to the internet, one click here, type your username and password and then the next question would be if it's public or private and also in this case we are doing the transcoding on the local machine and uploading it to the perfect format at YouTube. Okay, well, I think these are the news for PhotoRector 3. Um, the product is available um, already right now, and um, the suggested retail price is 139 euro. Um, for all the customers of uh, PhotoRector 2011, there's also um, good news, like we promised um, when we launched PhotoRector 2011. There's a free upgrade uh, for all the 
customers who bought the retail or the online version of uh, Food Director 2011. So please check the Sandy website and get your free update to Food Director 3.